Hello, it's Wendy again, and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a really fun project. Well, two projects in one, actually. Or three, if you count the painting. So you can pick and choose however many you parts of this that you want to do. And what I'm beginning with is this really pretty night sky, sparkly winter scene for Christmas. And I'm, then I went on to make a card out of it. So I have a card that you can give at Christmas time. And from there, I went on to make a journal. The theme is a countdown to Christmas. It's a planner that you can use to just look after all the details of getting ready for the holiday season. Every aspect of this project is really fun. So let's get started on it and you can follow along. To start with, I've cut a piece of cardstock, which has a nice little raised pattern of dots on it, to make a finished card that's going to be five by seven inches. And I still have, uh, I have the pieces, leftover pieces, so I'll be able to use those either in this project or in a different one. But my next step then is to paint the front cover. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, you can use this project two ways. One is to just create a Christmas card, the other is to create a countdown to Christmas booklet that you can carry with you to keep track of everything leading up to Christmas. And I'll show you how that goes after I've done the painting and started putting together the card. So to begin with, I'm going to do a, kind of a midnight, a winter midnight. The colors I'm mixing are Prussian blue and a little bit of lamp black. Now, before I put it on my paper, I want to test it. So I've tested some colors here. These are This is Prussian blue. Um, this is from a different palette than this one. And this is aquamarine blue. And I thought to go with this shade of blue, that Prussian blue is a better match. So I'm going to try this. And I can see that I don't like it with the lamp black in it because it makes it kind of greener. So I'm not going to use that which means I have to mop it up and start over. So instead I've mixed up um, Prussian Blue and Payne's Grey, and Payne's Grey is a little bit bluer, so that's quite nice. I think that'll work. Yeah, I think that'll work. See the difference between these two? It just really pays to try them. So what I want to do now is mix up a nice little puddle with some, with some intensity to it. And then I'm just going to put it on here like this. Starting out quite dark. Let's get some more color in there. Love this color, I just love this color. And I'm adding more water because we want it to be a gradient wash. Take this right down to the bottom of the page, getting lighter and lighter as we go. Notice how it bleeds down. There, now I'm just going to leave that to dry. I will be trimming a little bit off as I go, but we'll leave that for now. Now this is dry, but I decided I would like to have it a little bit, a little bit more intense. And in order to do that, I'm going to add another layer. I also got a little bit of, of um, backwash there, so that's okay, I love it. I'm picking up more paint, but I'm also adding more water to the paint that I pick up, because I want this darkness to come down a little farther on the page. And that's about as far as I want it to go. So I'll just take it with water from here, take the color out as much as possible. If you want your watercolors to dry faster, you can just use a hair dryer on them, which is what I did here. So now I'm going to add some trees. And I'm going to start with them really quite pale. So I've added a lot of water. Notice how I'm just going side to side and adding more water or just you know, subtracting. So we'll leave that one as it is. So 
So my furnace came on because it's cold today and it's rainy and it's windy and that means there's snow at higher elevations and I live right near mountains in the valley and there's I'm just basically we're surrounded by mountains. Don't backwash there, I don't want that. So I want those to dry. So that's nice and dry. Now I'm going to add some more. This is basically a little forest scene, kind of on a a starlit night, not a moonlit one. You just go kind of horizontally on these these boughs. You know, I'm not very good at painting and talking at the same time. I'm going to put another tree in here, here or here. I think I'll take it off the edge here. So let's do this because I want to cover up this part here. It didn't turn out that well. This is a really pretty blue. And as I was saying, I would. I live near the mountains, or at the edge of the mountains. I live in a flat valley, but when it gets cold in the winter, sometimes, often we don't get snow on the valley floor, but you can see the snow line go up and down on the sides of the mountains. It's too dark. And they're gradually um, looking like they're getting closer to the viewer, which is how it ought to be. So these ones are paler, which means they're back in the distance. And here we get a little bit darker. Okay, we can always I can always go over it again. But you see how easy this is. Just kind of touch it, go back and forth. I'm gonna leave that one like that and then put some more darker ones in the in the foreground. So this represents the snow, which you know when night falls in winter, you can't really tell the difference between where the snow ends and the sky begins. So it works really well that way. No, I'm going to go back over this one because it kind of disappeared. But I don't know whether you can hear my furnace going or, or the rain outside hitting the window. You can also hear my rose bush. I have a climbing rose next to this window and it's in the wind it scrapes against the window. I think I might put a dark one right in the middle here. Uh, or maybe just off center. Sort of like a feature tree. Let's try that. It's really hard to make a mistake doing this because there's really no pattern, so it doesn't turn out exactly. One way, it doesn't matter. As I've said before, watercolor is so pretty no matter what you do that you can almost not go wrong. I 
I quite like that. Now I'm going to leave the trees like this and I want to add some snow, some sparkly snow. So what I'm going to do is because I thought I had some white gouache, but I don't. And so I'm going to use this white acrylic paint and I'm not going to put it in my palette because if it dries, it's like rock. You can't get it off. So I'm using just a styrofoam little saucer and I'm going to cover up my painting with this rag so that I can try something and mix this together and see what happens. So just a little blob of that and I'm going to use a brush that I don't care about because I certainly don't want to use my nice watercolor brushes and this one will do. This is actually an oil painting brush or a, or a brush for acrylics. So I'm going to make it so it's kind of I'm kind of damp so that I can actually uh, flick it onto the paper. So I need a bit more water in it so that it will actually spray. And I'm going to use a scrap left. This is left over from my video um, about doing the watercolor garlands. So let's see how this goes. Well, that goes pretty well, doesn't it? You can see how what happens when it dries. It's already dried on my finger. Um, so what I want to do now that I know that it works is just put a, make, the, make my mixture a little bit thicker so that it doesn't spray so finely because I don't want it to cover it up or anything. Put some blobs on there. Let's try this. I think that's perfect. So I'll just move this out of the way. Way and go right ahead and I think that's enough. Any more would be overdoing it. You'll be pleased to know that I was able to remove it from my finger by wetting my finger and wiping it off. So no big deal there. So I'm going to let this acrylic dry. It's nice to have some of these on hand. Um, they're cosmetic um, swabs with a pointy end and a, a little paddle on the end. So I like to keep those around my studio so that I can do things like this. Since this one's kind of a blob, I'm almost too late. I think I'll leave it. It helped a little bit, but I think I'll leave it like that. Now my paint is all dry and the great thing about using this for a palette is that you don't have to clean it up afterwards, you can just chuck it. Now I'm going to do something kind of radical in the watercolor world and you'll see what I mean in a moment. So here's another scrap that I can use to work with and I'm, I've got Crafter's Glitter Glue and I'm going to do um, a glitter layer on my painting. So, But first I want to try it and see how it's going to work out. So I bought this little spatula and the glue at the local dollar store. And I want to just put glitter all over my painting. And I think it'll work if I don't mess with it too much. See how this is kind of bringing up the paint? So we have to watch for that rid of that red off there and I think I'll do this a little bit at a time. Put a little blob there. Oh, should have gone bigger. I say go bigger, go home. Well I'm already at home so that's not gonna work here but very easy to spread with this little palette knife. And I think that'll do it. It also gives a bit of texture. So there we have that. Now I'm going to just leave this for now to dry. Put the cap book on the glue. I love stuff like this. 
and move this aside because we're going on to step two for the card. So this will be the front of the card, but it's I'm going to trim it, and so you'll see why in a moment. I have so little space in my studio that I have to move everything around when I want to do anything. I'm really kind of struggling with that because I'm adding new things, more paper crafts and more, more interesting things to do with watercolors and papers and all kinds of ephemera kind of stuff. And space is an issue. Here's our card again. And what I want to do now is put on um, kind of a border. So I have this dazzling stuff. I love sparkle and I really like blues so I thought this would be really nice. So what I'm planning to do is to take this and make kind of um, a frame for the watercolor which will go on top of it. So let's see how that works. And I think I'm going to have to measure a little bit. Oh, that was pretty good guesstimating. Now let me see if my painting is dry. There, my glitter glue has dried and I'm going to just leave it here for a few minutes because I have another job to do. I've decided to line my card with this tissue that has these little um, shiny dots on it, which I think is really festive looking. So what I need to do is measure exactly how big to make it. And I'm going to do that just with a pencil and then I will, I will glue it into the inside. So I'm gonna make sure I'm really Keep in mind that none of this is difficult. It's just, you just do one thing at a time. So I'm just using a glue stick and I would I would normally use a larger one, but this is all I have and I have several of these. So I'm taking this right out to the edges. And then some it looks like. I'm just gonna do the whole thing so that it sticks down really well. And we have a few wrinkles, which is fine. I think it kind of adds to the charm. Now for the interior of the card, what I'm going to do is cut a piece of cardstock in the same size as this so that it just fits in here like that. So I'm going to use this as my pattern. Um, and I'm, try I'm trying to decide whether to use white or blue. And you know what? I think I'll use both. So I'm going to use this as my pattern and just mark it and cut it. I don't mind cutting and leaving little bits of papers because I can use them for other things as well. I have so many things in mind. I'm, I'm going to get, get into doing some junk journals and you know what I really love is to be able to use watercolor in lots of useful ways. I mean it's lovely to have a watercolor picture on the wall and I have lots of them I'm, as I'm sure you can understand but uh, it's also I love to make something out of them so that it's something useful. Now I'm going to just make this leave this as a border and put this inside it. So I'm going to, let's see, just mark it like this and do the same again. It is so dark here today and the clouds are so low. It feels like it's almost nighttime and it's only like 2.30 in the afternoon. So these will go together like this. So I'm going to get out my handy glue stick again. Okay, there's the interior of the card done. Now let's have a look at our painting. I'm just gonna pull these tapes off. The glue's all nice and dry. And I'm pulling this away from the picture so that it doesn't accidentally tear it. There, how pretty is that? Wow, I just love it. I almost think I should keep that white border, but then it won't fit on my, my backing paper with the sparkles. See what I mean? So I decided not to use the glitter paper and not to cut this down because it just doesn't seem to work. It's it's too busy and I don't know, it kind of, all this kind of takes away from this and there's glitter here and glitter here and it's like, like glitter storm. However, white does look good behind it. So I'm thinking of doing something like this and putting a message here 
um, just leaving this white border on because it, there's a nice contrast with the blue. And I'm going to try something a little bit different with the message, which is I've got these stamps and I'm thinking, let it snow, Merry Christmas. Put that in a corner, I think that's too big. I could do Merry Christmas along the top like this, just to tr kind of try it here. Well, there's that Merry Christmas. Let's put this in the right place to start with. And put that Merry Christmas there. Just to help us visualize here. I think I like that. Okay, let's see what we can do. Let's just move some of these things aside. And I'm going to use this piece of cardstock and I'm going to do something unconventional. Because instead of using a stamp pad, I'm going to use watercolor on the stamp and see how that works. I have tried it before with varying degrees of success, I'll say. So what I need to do now is wet my paint again. I want to get a really nice, intense mix. And in, to, in order to do that, it's less water, more paint. And I'm using this as a scrap, because if it works out, then I'll what I will do is just cut it to fit. So let's try this. I don't want it to be too sloppy, because then the water will mush out between the letters. exactly what it did. Okay. So I need need less water, more paint, which we can do, hopefully. This may not even work, I have to admit. I've only tried it a couple of times and it was kind of a hit and miss. Okay, that's a fail. Okay, here's uh, plan B, which is I have this old, quite old stamp pad in blue, which I'm going to try. So it's like my, I have a little grandson who's three and he, if, if his mama tells him to do something and he doesn't want to, he says, no mom, no, new plan, new plan, which she seldom falls for. I'm not liking that either. It's too wimpy. Like I said, this is a very old stamp pad. That's a little bit better. I'm gonna try that. Okay, but I'm not going to, let me see. I've already got a piece of white that works here. So what I'm going to do is glue this on, cut that out and glue it on. When I thought it couldn't rain any harder, it rains harder. Okay, here's my little Merry Christmas, and I've decided what to do. Um, I'm just using a brush marker and going to go around the edge so that it'll stand out on the um, the white on white. Basically, it's white on white, so. By doing this, It'll give it a little line of contrast, which I think will be really nice looking. So it's going to be really attractive. And that's what we want, right? We want attractive in all things. At least I do. There. Well, maybe I'll put this over here. I need something there then, don't I? All right, I have it figured out. So I'm going to glue this one in place. Like that. 
And now I'm going to take our little watercolor and do likewise. little guy in place. I wish my ink was better. I do have to get some new stamp pads or re-ink them and I do have to stop using this glue without something behind it but I'm going to put this right here. And then I have these little little shiny dots that I picked up the other day. Which ones did I use? those ones. So I'm going to put those on. There, there's the card. Now you can do this in lots of different ways. You don't certainly don't have to do it the way I did it. I do hope you'll try the watercolor because you, there's lots of ways you can go with it. And in fact, I'm going to go on to use this and make the little journal that I talked about in the start. Here's the inside of the card. You can write your own message here. And, or you could print it off on the computer and, and insert it there. Um, this is a pretty liner. If you wanted, you could put something on the back of it, but you don't have to. However, I'm gonna move on to the next step, which is creating the journal. So let's get started on that one. So here's the thing, as my grandson would say, new plan, new plan. I decided to separate the card video from the journaling video. Instead of having one really long video, I decided to make this into two videos. So I've got the card video, which you've just watched, and I'm going to do the journaling video in a separate video. So that should be up in a few days, and I sure hope you watch it. In the meantime, please subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so you can get the notifications. And I'll see you next time.